Well, welcome everyone to the Couples Academy show. My name is Hassani. It is good to have each and every one of you on with us this morning, wherever you may be dialing in from, from around the world, whatever country, city, or state, we want to know who you are, where you're from, so that we can obviously um, acknowledge you and appreciate you for being a part of the community. Listen, make sure before we get started that you like, share, and subscribe. That's the only thing that we ask that you do because it makes a significant difference in letting the world know that we're here so that change can begin to take place all around us. I'm joined by the illustrious Roland Bradley. How are you, my friend? I'm doing excellent, man. How are you? I'm doing phenomenal. It's great to be in 2003, excited about all that is going to happen in this year. Are you excited? I am very excited. There's so much going on and I am very much looking forward to it. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Well, we, Danielle and I just wrapped up a two part series. We were talking about, you know, what are the signs, the 11 signs that really are telltale sign that your spouse may cheat again. And we kind of walk through what someone needs to be aware of, what they need to observe so that they can, you know, be on guard they can pray they can do the necessary work to see if a change can take place but i thought that the the the, the obvious next conversation would be really unpacking you know 10 signs that your partner will be loyal after the affair so you know we want to give people hope and encouragement and we want them to be able to really process what they're seeing if these are the things that you're seeing it is an indication that things are going well and you can believe in the fact that uh, your spouse will be faithful. Now, we don't want you to hope that he or she will. We don't want you to simply believe that he or she will. We want you to have certainty. I want you to write that word down. I want you to put it on your wall. I want you to get it in your mind. Certainty is what we're all in search of. And once we have that, that's when the safety is restored. That's when the trust can begin. That's when forgiveness really is actualized in a person's life. And and so that's what we're talking about. But before we get started, you know, a couple quick announcements. As you know, Last Chance Weekend is happening um, next month. We, we always do it at the second uh, weekend of the month. So it's going to be February the 10th through the 11th. Make sure you take advantage of that. We've been talking about the foundations program. You can get a dollar. You can get a 15 day trial for a dollar just to test it out. It's an amazing program where we meet on Mondays and Wednesdays uh, and really talk about giving you foundation for your life and for your marriage. The practitioners are all involved in it. It's an excellent experience. You should definitely check that out. And also Unearth is about to start January 30th. So all of you women who are ready to go, some of you have been patiently waiting for the new um, program to un unleash. It is here. Danielle is excited. She's going in. You want to be a part of that. But let's dive into today's conversation. We're talking about, once again, the 10 signs that your partner will be loyal after an affair. This is what many people are waiting for. Now, let's start off with the premise. Once a cheater, always a cheater. We don't believe in that. Um, there are many people who have been redeemed and restored, and they are brand new men and women who operate in honor and integrity and are willing to do what is necessary to restore their relationship. And so the first thing we want to point to, what is the first sign that we're looking at? Number one, they're honest about what happened in the past. There's so many people who don't even want to address their past. They don't want to look back at one's past faults, flaws, sins, vices, betrayals, because they're still impacted by it. Maybe they're struggling with shame. Maybe they're dealing with guilt. But a person can look back on one's past, right? And they're able to be honest about it. They're able to take ownership for what he or she has done. Uh, there's no blame shifting. There's no blaming situations and circumstances and conditions for why you did what you did. You're honest about the patterns. You're honest about the influences. You're honest about where your heart and your mind was. You're honest about all of the things that put you in a space of vulnerability that cause you to make such a decision. And you are an individual who owns your mistakes. And that's the key. Owning your mistake and not pointing the finger and making your spouse responsible or previous partners, if we're talking about previous affairs responsible, it's really, it's really a good indication that you've matured Okay, uh, you've taken responsibility and you've realized the consequences of your actions and uh, you represent a person who never wants to put other people in that compromising situation again. 
And so if he or she can look back and own their past and be honest about it, and it's it's not a sting, it doesn't, it doesn't cause them to spiral, it doesn't cause them to operate in negative tendencies, that is an awesome sign. Uh, hit it, Roland. Hey, listen, I know for myself, looking back at the past and looking at how I was showing up, it motivates me to want to show up differently today. And when I look and I see the dark image of myself and I see that spirit that was on me and how I was showing up, I refuse to continue on that way. So looking at the past and looking at how we were showing up definitely helps today. And so we have to be courageous enough to go there so that we can benefit from it. Everyone can benefit from it, but we have to be willing to go there and look at ourselves as to who we were to show up as who we are today to continue to be better versions of ourselves tomorrow. And so it's not a bad thing to look at the past. Absolutely. There's a question that came in early and I appreciate uh, you guys asking your questions. As we mentioned, we just talked about, you know, the signs that your spouse would cheat again. And now we're talking about signs that your child, your spouse would be faithful. So Papet M says, how should the situation be approached if the unfaithful ticks more boxes on the will cheat again list? Um, then the will be loyalist because he won't even admit it, it despite physical evidence. This is where counseling comes in because at the end of the day, you can't do it on your own. Now, uh, what if your spouse is not interested in getting help, right? He's in denial. He or she's going to continue to do what they do. The reason why we encourage you to get help is because not only are we focusing on your healing and how you need to get and navigate through this situation, but we also give you strategy, right? On what to actually do. See, for such a complex situation to be responded in a sound bite does not serve you. There's something that we call the solo spouse intensive. And that is for individuals who are partnered with others who either, you know, were the affair partner or maybe the person coming doing the solo intensive is the affair partner and they want to get themselves together. The point is it, it takes two, but it only takes one to initiate a process. I've said this countlessly. Danielle wasn't on board. She was checked out. She was not interested in anything. I had to be the one. And because of my consistency, things began to shift. I would imagine, Roland, same thing for you, same thing for so many other couples. Uh, one spouse usually is the one that's leading the charge, uh, hoping that the other spouse will get on board. We, we call it a full court press, right? If you know anything about basketball, we call it a full court press. And sometimes we have to go all in. We have to be willing to push and push beyond our limits to get the results that we're looking for. Yes, Janella was, she had checked out. She had got to the point that she felt like she had done all that she can do, which rightfully so, because she was not the offender, right? I had to come up. I had to show up. I had to begin to fight for us and not just fight for us, but fight for generations to come. And a lot of times we don't look at the totality of what we're dealing with. It's not just about us. If we have children, we want to protect our children and our children's children. We are fighting for our last name. And that's not an mm -hmm. easy fight when there has been a betrayal, but you have to be willing, as we say, to go all in on a full court press. There it is. Popette follows up. I've, re I've reiterated many times that there's no consequences or repercussions for being honest and transparent and, and taking accountability of all that he has done uh, in attempt to delete evidence. Uh, well, he deletes evidence from every device possible. Right. So you have to understand his failure to be honest and transparent may have nothing to do with you. See, this yeah. is what makes lying and deception so, so deep. Oftentimes we're like, okay, what do I need to do to, to get you to tell the truth? But, but, but the real issue may stem beyond you. It may have existed before you. It may have come from another place. Remember, most of us are shaped by our past. So when we've gone through trauma, when we've had situations growing up, we've learned life lessons in our, in our age of maturation as we're growing up, right? So what we learned from mom and dad, what we were exposed to as a child, really taught us certain lessons. And then that's when the defense mechanisms and the way in which we maneuver, maneuver begin to come into play. So, so, so you're asking him to do what possibly he hasn't been able to do 
for a long time because there are some underlining issues beyond this betrayal that keeps him in a space of lying. He's lying to you because he's lying to himself. He's engaging in self, self-deception. So, so a deeper question would be, what does truth represent for you? In your mind, when you tell the truth, what are the what, what are the what are the drawbacks? What are the risks? What are the qu- consequences? And also for you, when you lie, when you deceive, when you're dishonest, what are the rewards? What are the benefits in your mind associated with that particular behavior? And so, what we have to do is detach these expectations or perceived results from these behaviors, and really unlearn. Right. Because we talk about when you're learning something new, you have to unlearn in order to relearn. You have to get rid of these deeply embedded beliefs that do not serve you. And what we have found countlessly, even outside of the realm of infidelity, most people are liars. They are. They're liars, they're deceivers, they're lying to themselves. And it's so much deeper than the situation we're dealing with. And so that's why getting help to kind of unpack that is critically important. So while we encourage you to get help, we also encourage him. I don't know where he is on the spectrum of of wanting to get help and admitting that he has a problem. And if he doesn't admit that he has a problem, that's a part of the problem. Listen, guys, you're watching a couple's Academy show. We're going to go to a quick commercial break. We have so much more to give you, man. I'm excited about what we have coming up, but stay tuned. We'll be right back in just a second. All right, guys, we're back. You're watching the Couples Academy show. If you're just joining us, we're talking about 10 signs, 10 signs uh, that your partner um, will be loyal after an affair. And this is what we really want to hear. And we want him or her, whoever the former affair partner may be, to hear it. Because oftentimes we continue to make the mistakes. We think we're doing the right thing and we're not showing up the right way. This will give them, as well as us, an indication on what are the correct behaviors that they need to engage in, the correct mindsets that they need to begin to have to shift things in a positive direction. All right. I want you to uh, take it away, Roland. I know you have some powerful information to share. Yes. Yeah, so the other reason um, we can know this is because we, the, the partner has found the root cause. What is the root cause? A lot of times we do things and not consider the root cause. It's not always about um, the physical interaction with the affair partner. Sometimes we mm-hmm. do things for underlying reasons, whether they be job stress on the job or whether they be, you know, uh, financial issues that we are looking for another place or another a way of avenue to get what we want or what we need. Sometimes we look at the relationships as now we're just roommates and not partners in the relationship. And we have to look at these opportunities to better serve us in a way of saying, okay, I need to put more romance in my relationship. I need to be um, more spontaneous in our in my relationship and not just give up on the relationship because it's not where you want it to be. 
There's an alternative for infidelity. It, it is actually being faithful. It is actually doing the things that we need to do for one another. It is actually going over and beyond. We Google everything that we want to Google, right? We look up, we research things that we want to. But when it talks about investing and looking up to invest in our marriages, in our relationships, in ourselves, then all of a sudden we don't know where to look. And that's why it's important that we continue to better ourselves, look at the root cause. Sometimes it's generational. And we have to be honest, the fact that I'm dealing with a generational issue that I need to overcome. Who's going to yeah. break the gen generational cycle? Who's going to be that guy? Right. Because nobody wants to be that guy to do the bad thing. But let's be that guy to do the right thing. And all of us, man, woman, boy, child, girl, we all have a responsibility to do our best. So we have to find a root cause as to why we do what we do. So that way we can stay clear away from it. Roland, so profound and so true, because at the end of the day, every fruit has a root. Absolutely. And in order to really overcome this issue, you got to get to the root of a thing, because the reality is, hardly anybody cheats just because now right they may say that they may say i don't know why i did it they may say mm -hmm. it was just an opportunity i mean it was just and it, that's because they're not thinking uh hard enough they're not digging deep enough because everything we do is attached to something else mm -hmm. there's a root that root may stem all the way back from childhood, first relationship, previous marriage, the beginning of this particular relationship, it comes from somewhere. And the only example that I can think of is, you know, I've kind of shared this before, you go to a mechanic because something's wrong with your vehicle, you know the issue is in the engine, but really the root cause is somewhere unrelated to that. And you're like, well, how in the world is that connected to that? But this is where the problem is showing up. This is why you need somebody who has knowledge and skill and can properly assess and do a diagnostic test to really unpack for you how it all makes sense. Whether you, whether you understand it or not, this is the root and addressing the root will change ultimately the fruit. Because to your point, Roland, if you don't know the why, you increase the the probability of you engaging in it again uh, because someone may false diagnose what the real issue is and you go in that area trying to fix it and then that didn't work i did it again and then that didn't work i did it again and why do i keep doing this maybe this is just who i am and so now you start interpreting your own self-image in a way that doesn't serve you which which will cause you to engage in more sabotaging behavior. So I think you're absolutely right. This next one, Roland, is kind of similar to the first one. We talked about it's important to be able to talk about your past, but this is slightly different. Um, these are individuals, you know, we're talking about people who are loyal, who will never cheat again. These are individuals who can talk about their past in an articulate way, right? Mm -hmm. So, so that why is critically important. And now I can articulate, I can explain thoroughly. I'm not struggling to form a, 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 you know, a, um, a statement about why I did what I did. Uh, it's almost like if I had a chance to write you know, a dissertation on my own behaviors, I could do that. That's the level of self-awareness that we want all people to be in because change starts when first you are aware of oneself. Self-awareness helps you to identify where you are and where you're going and how far you are away from actually getting there. And so spending time with oneself, meditation and prayer, coaching, therapy, whatever it is, reading a good book, being a part of a program, whatever that may be, will help. Um, in terms of being a part of a program, you know, Poppet, I appreciate all that you're sharing on today's show. She actually said that her husband is in a program uh, similar to, I guess, Foundry, where they're fixing marriages and communication and things of that nature. So we encourage him to continue to do that. And, and just know when you're in something long enough, eventually there's a breakthrough. So who he is now is not an indication of who he can become if he continues in this work. All right, Roland, let's hit it. And so the, one of the things I want to say really quick to your point, um, that we have to make sure that we are creating a safe space for the person to articulate, because a lot of times what happens, we 
as individuals, as the offender, we grow and we want to articulate what has happened in the past, but then it becomes a judgmental investigative uh, session when I'm trying to articulate how I was then and how I was then and who I am today is not the same. So we have to remember to give safe space to allow that person to articulate if they are willing to do so to bring about change and growth yeah. in the process. So I just wanted to add that to the point. Um, but the next thing, which is a segue to where I'm going next, is the fact that when a person is willing to go to therapy. So a lot of times we have individuals that don't want to go to um, therapy because they say, oh, we can fix our own problem. What happens in this house stays in this house. Well, if that's the case, then what happens in the house would be able to be fixed in the house. And a lot of times it doesn't work that way. Sometimes you have to have a reconstruction, renovation, and someone has to come in and redo or undo what has been there. And we have to do the same thing with our marriages. We have to allow a third party, a third person, a mediator to come in to guide us, to give structure, to give voice to and, and, and to our situations. It's just like if you go to a new job, they say they work welcome the new person. Why? Because now I have a fresh set of eyes that can see some things that we couldn't see. We get used to seeing the same old thing and we realize that, oh, this person sees something that I didn't see. You know, the marriage is falling apart, not because it was this, but we found out it was because of that. And you mm -hmm. have to be willing to have someone come in to, to do your part. If a person is willing to show up, to show up better. They're doing everything that they're supposed to do. They're willing to go to therapy. They're willing to get counseling. They're willing to go to Last Chance Weekend. They're willing to go to Founder. They're willing to join on Earth. You have to look at that as growth and them willing to be loyal again. And that willingness, and I'm, I'm glad you're sharing that, leads to the next point. They really want to be better. You see, yeah. you can join any one of these programs or you can join a process and be doing it begrudgingly, doing it only because this is what she said we had to do to keep this marriage together. So here we are, right? You can tell in a person's disposition, in their posture, in their tone, in their interaction, in the energy that they exude, whether this is something that they ultimately want to do. And so they're not doing it by force. They're not doing it because they got caught. You know, sometimes people are uh, very very remorseful because I got caught. If I hadn't got caught, I'd still be doing this thing and, and there would be no desire in me to end it. But the net, but now that I got caught and I know it's at risk now, all of a sudden I'm, I'm so vulnerable and I'm willing to do whatever it And it's, you know, it's not genuine. And so mm -hmm. your spouse knows like at the end of the day, it's an insult to your spouse's intelligence when you try to lie and deceive and give a false impression because you can't hide from your spouse, right? They see you in 3D. They have a front row seat to your life. And so you could put on a front, you could perform for them, but at the end of the day, who you are 24 hours a day is a true indication of who you really are, not what you do in the time of a session or what you do when you show up for a particular meeting. And so there's got to be a true authentic want. Now I will say, and we've said this before, men and women are motivated by two different things at two different seasons in life. And when a, when a man truly taps into his motivation, you don't have to question whether he wants to do it. And so for all of you um, spouses, all of you partners who question, is he really serious this time? Does he really want it? Because he wasn't serious the last time. We all get to a place. We all get to a place at some point in our lives when we are ready. And I wouldn't want you to engage in um, what we would call confirmation bias. Confirmation bias in this sense means we're imprisoning our partner to his or her past, to his or her former motivations, and assuming that that's the same space that they're in. We wanna give our spouse grace to grow, grace to change, grace to demonstrate, not just articulate, demonstrate with their behaviors that they're repentant, that they desire this thing, and their want will come out of their pores. You can't, you can't hide it. When you really, 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 really want something, you go all in. And so it's not just about checking boxes and showing up to a session. They wake up thinking about it. They go to bed thinking about it. It's a part of their lifestyle now. And that's the powerful thing about Foundry. There's some people who come from into Foundry. They go through the 12 weeks. They get empowered. They say, thank you very much. But then those 
those who continue on, those who have made it a way of life, those who are committed to this process on a daily basis are the ones who truly want change and transformation in their lives, and they ultimately get it. And we show up differently. I Just to add to your point, we show up differently. After going through that process and wanting it bad enough, we show up differently. And that leads me to our next point as it relates to we don't blame anyone else. When a person is being loyal, when a person is has truly changed, they're not blaming mm -hmm. their spouse. They're not blaming circumstances or situations. They are owning their stuff. And when you own your stuff, when you can be honest about who you were, the, the change begins to happen. The bottom line is there has to be a heart transformation to take place yes. in order for you to see change. We can't we can we can just say we're going to change. We can just say we have changed all day long. But until you have a sincere heart transformation and it is uh, obvious and evident that that transformation has happened, it will just be more of the same. It will just be fixed up, pretty looking and not real change. And so when we don't blame um, other other people and don't you know, we don't we don't blame uh, situations and circumstances, then that's where the true deliverance. That's where the true healing can take place for yourself and also for your spouse. So we have to be conscious of it. And that is the only way that we're going to be able to show up differently. Yeah. One thousand percent. You know, this whole blame situation is a is a problem because. When a person says, well, why did you cheat? Well, you weren't meeting my needs and I wasn't getting the sex and, you know, you didn't give me attention anymore. And, I, you know, I no longer got affection from you. And, and you know, you used to appreciate me and you don't give me the words you used to give me. That is that is blame. Now, those things may be true that those things are no longer happening because we got to deal with the reality of what is right. That contributes to where you are in your relationship. Mm -hmm. However. Let me tell you something. If you have th five couples and they all go through the same thing, the reaction may be different. One cheats, right? One may become verbally abusive. One may become physically abusive. One may shut down and, and isolate and go into a corner. They're all suffering the same thing. What causes each to show up differently? Well, when we're faced with pressure, it forces out of us what is already in us. See, there's certain things I'm just not going to do. I am not going to beat my wife, no matter how much anyone tries to convince me. That's just not in me. But a wife beater under the same situations and circumstances will give his partner a black eye. <laughs> you see, so so this is why we say the key to your marital restoration is your personal, personal transformation. transformation. We got to deal with you. We got to get into you. What, what, what's going on in you? What is in your childhood? What is in your upbringing? What happened in previous relationships? What, what are you still not dealing with? What issues have not been addressed? What trauma have you not overcome? What things have not been resolved? That's what we got to get to. Because those things, those things that are happening beneath the surface are manifesting and spilling outward in your relationship. And because you're not self-aware, what do you do? You blame your spouse for your poor decision making when really it's me it's me it's me oh lord who's standing in the need of prayer i hope this is helping guys i hope this is helping you cannot blame your partner and and let's go to the next one and we may have to go a little bit over today we're going to the next one guys this is number seven uh, a person who will never cheat again how do you know because they're incredibly open and honest <laughs> real talk we say this all the time a person who has nothing to hide hides nice. nothing. nothing you need my phone take my phone you need to get in you need the passwords to my to my lap come on in here you need to read my email listen sit down next to me i'll walk you through them i'm not cringing i'm not nervous i'm not sweating bullets you know what i'm saying i'm not i'm not in an uncomfortable space because you want access to i understand why you need access to i'm not gonna hold you to an expectation that's unrealistic that you should just believe because i say you should just believe because i've ended the relationship it's gonna take time so in the meantime Come on over here. Whatever you need, you got, babe. See, when you operate in that level of confidence and authority and transparency, you rob and strip your spouse of their um, disbelief and unwillingness to.
to give you the benefit of doubt because you're laying it out for them. You're not robbing them of it. You're not compartmentalizing your life, still living in secrecy, leaning into, I'm just a private person. You're not doing that. And you, and you, and you tell the truth about everything. See, if you lie about anything, especially the small stuff. Roland, a lot of times people lie about the smallest things that are so insignificant. And then our spouses say, well, man, if you will lie about this, then of course you'll lie about that. If you could lie about nothing, of course you'll lie about this big something. How can I believe anything that's coming out of your mouth? It happens all the time. And, and, and it, it just makes absolute no sense. You, you take a, a bad situation and make it worse when you have the, all the opportunity to make it better. But I do want to speak to the point of you saying, you know, we, we get to the point where, you know, I give you my phone. I give you the password. I want you to look because in times past, so many of us, we have we were manipulative and we were um, we were deceptive. And we'll say, oh, yeah, take my phone knowing that we had other means of communication when we were doing the wrong thing. And so, again, it goes back to having that heart transformation and being yep. integral, right? If you're going to be integral, you're going to be integral all the way and not just partially. Because so many times, you know, we, we have other means of communication now. It's not just the cell phone. It's not just the email. We have everything, right? We have our work wives and our work husbands. And so we have our, our codes of communication. And it goes deeper than just giving up something. It has to be a change of the heart, right? And so I want to make sure that we understand that, you know, the old folks used to say your, your slip is showing or, or, or you have some tissue on your, on your heel. Right. Because you think that you're getting away with something that you're really not. <laughs> Integrity shows up differently. OK, so I just want to make that point. Um, and it leads wait, us wait, to the next. I, got, I just, just got to ask the question. Were you ever around young folks? <laughs> I was around, around a whole folks. lot of old folks. Hey, listen, that's where the wisdom comes from. So, you know, I, I was I was sitting back as a young man and I was just listening, taking it all in for such a time as this. So. <laughs> It, it, it was very important that I, I, I listened and paid attention, but it leads us to the other, the next point, which is there, you know, you know, your spouse will be loyal if they are not willing, if they're willing to have the hard conversations, hard conversations are those, are those conversations that make the offender feel uncomfortable. But sometimes, as we say, we have to sit in being uncomfortable right you have to be willing to go through the hurt and pain yourself in order yeah. to understand the hurt and pain that your spouse is going through in order for both of you all to heal that is called empathy right when you have empathy that is putting yourself in the other person's shoes and so yeah. when we do that that allows us to be more compassionate about the to, you know uh, to our spouse and then it, it brings about more passion to get it right and so when we have compassion for our spouse, it drives the passion and the motivation and the inspiration for us to mm. get it right. And that's the goal. That's what we want to do. That's how we want to show up. And the person that's asking, how can I know if they really change? You will know if they really change when you can feel the passion that they have for you. I love my spouse. She is the best thing that ever happened to me. And it's not just words out of my mouth, but it's actions from what? My heart. Create in me, oh Lord, a clean heart and renew mm. in me a right spirit, right? That looks different. That looks mm. different. When you can be honest about who you are, when you could be honest about where you were and where you want to go, you, you just move different. You act different. You walk different. You talk different. And you surround yourselves around other like-minded people, men and women that have the same thought pattern as you do. <clears throat> wow. Wow. You, you're just dropping them. And I love it. Listen, I, I'm going to go to this question. It's not related to the topic, but Roland, I want you to answer it. One of the uh, uh, members of the Couples Academy community actually answered it, but I want you to follow up with it. The question is, does Foundry create a community that exists after the Foundry weekend, meaning a community of individuals that keeps you accountable. And then Cali Power Couple, we love you folks. Couples Academy is definitely a family and fosters accountability, encouragement, and ongoing support, which is true. I want you to speak to Foundry uh, in particular because just quickly share when you entered into Foundry, how long it lasted, and what has happened since that time. So I joined Foundry 1 and last January, January uh, 2022. 
And here we are in 2023. I've gone through the 12-week program. And to Asani's point earlier, some guys go through the 12-week program. They say, thank you very much, and they fall off. But beyond just a community, we have established a brotherhood, a brotherhood of men that till today, we are still going strong. And we are stronger today as a unit than we were when we started as an individual. And so Foundry is just not a community. It is a brotherhood of like-minded men that we hold each other accountable. We lift each other up. We've all cried together. We've prayed together. We've lifted one another up. We've celebrated. We've seen the growth and the progress from each individual. And so that allows us to be motivated to get it right. Why? I don't want to let my brother on my left or my right down. Mm -hmm. And we hold each other up. We lift each other up. And that's a lot of things. A lot of times, that's what we were lacking. The men that have joined Foundry, we were lacking true integral friendships. Now we have gone beyond friendships. We have family. We are a family. And that's what we all wanted. That's what we all found. And that's what we all continue to receive. So the weekend is great. The 12 weeks is great. But what happens after that? It's just like when you get married. Oh, the wedding was beautiful. Now the work begins. The work didn't start 12 weeks. The work started after the 12 weeks. The passion came after the 12 weeks. The integrity came after the 12 weeks. And that's what we found. That's what we have. That's what Couples Academy is. The Moving Forward program, Foundry, Unnerved, Foundations, all of it. Uh, yeah, you're going to get a lot of insightful information, but it's the community. You know, there's many men in the program who are a part of fraternities. Um, and I'm not really, I can't name them all. I know you have like the Omegas and the Kappas and the Alphas. Like I, you know, that wasn't my thing, but they, they do great work, right? Now they come into Foundry and they say, oh my God, I have deeper, closer relationships with the brotherhood of this group than the organizations that I've been a part of since I was in college. Mm -hmm. This is not just a fraternity like the other Greek letter organizations. This is a fraternity of extraordinary men. You may Absolutely. not come out that way, but that's what we're on the path to become. Extraordinary, extraordinary in everything that we do. So I encourage you, come on in. Come on in, sign up, get this good stuff because it works. All right, number nine, we're almost there, guys. Um, you were talking about the importance of having tough conversations, right, Roland? Uh, now we're talking about vulnerability. Um, at, at the end of the day, I've got to be vulnerable, and it means emotionally naked. I, I get together with my spouse, no problem getting physically naked because we know what we're about to get into. So we know more about each other's breasts, hips, lips, vaginas, penises, butts, thighs, all of those things uh, than we do our heart, our mind, our feelings, our emotions, our thoughts, our dreams, our passions. We oftentimes do not connect in that way. It requires a level of vulnerability. And because I still fear being hurt, the wall is up. I'm on guard. I don't allow you in. I don't allow you to meet myself to get into you. And so there's this impenetrable thick wall that we can't see into. And we will never have the intimacy that we want if we don't make decision to be vulnerable. Period. Point blank. Vulnerability is critically important in any relationship. And that's what we should be striving for. That's the space that we should be in. Once we're there, we're in a sweet spot. And so when a former uh, betrayer is now vulnerable, because at the end of the day, one of the reasons why he or she has connected to another person is because they've disconnected from you and connected to someone outside of that uh, individual who's in the covenant relationship that they're with. But as long as you're remaining connected spiritually, emotionally, uh, intellectually, then the physical connection will be there as well. And you're absolutely right. And vulnerability is the most sacred part of your marriage. It's the most sacred part of who you are as individual. It's your own no judgment zone when you can look at each other in a way that only you all can see one another. And that's the mistake that we make so many times is we be we we let other people infiltrate the intimacy and the vulnerability that we have between one another. We have to get to that place that we we, we protect our yes with a bunch of no's, right? We protect who we are 
right? We build that wall of, of, of foundation around us so that way we can be vulnerable to connect with one another in ways that's unbreakable, right? And so when we when we do that, then we, like you said, we're in that sweet spot. And it leads us to the, the final point, which is when your spouse is actively working on the relationship, being vulnerable, being transparent, being honest, being humble, right? A state of humility has kicked in. The fact that I have done wrong, I've shown up in a different way, and I am willing to work on the relationship, work on it how? Doing whatever it is I have to do to correct my wrongs. Whatever that looks like, I will do it. I will make sure that I protect who we are, protect our last name to make sure that things look different than they had in the times past. If we didn't do it, now we can be explorers of all the things that we want to do that we didn't do before. That's right. So that person is actively working on the relationship to make it better than it was. This was good. This was good. Yeah. I appreciate you rolling. You dropping them like uh, it's hot because that's what you do. So to Derek and Ben Scott, Cali Power Couple, Papette M, Stephanie N, Tiffany Williams, Latrina, Miss Jules, Torre, Gonzalez, Kenny Burkett, Shalice. We got more. D oh, my brother, my brother, Danny. Uh, Denise, the list just go, goes on and on. Natasha, uh, Marcy, good to see you. It's been a minute. Kenny Burkett. Listen, we want to thank you all for being a part of it. Tune in tomorrow. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. 2020 is going to be an incredible weekend where, or year, excuse me. Wherever you are in your situation, keep tuning in. We're here to give you what you need to turn your situation around. I've read some of your comments. It's not quite where it needs to be. It's going to get there. Stay tuned. Love you guys. Listen, sign up for foundations. It's a dollar. What what, 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 what's the harm? A 15-day trial for a dollar? Come on now. You didn't spend 10 not even know where it's going. See you guys tomorrow. Take care.